Dionysus was one of those gods whose birth was a mix of both good and bad luck. However, his birth was in no way conventional in any remote sense of the term. Dionysus' first bit of good luck was that his mother was the beautiful and gentle mortal Samil, who was a princess, and that his father was none other than the mighty Zeus, ruler of Olympus. The two had been having a love affair. However, Samil had not even the faintest idea that her lover was in fact Zeus himself, since Zeus transformed himself before going to her. Hera found out about the affair, and as in many other cases, she went psycho and tried to make things a living hell for Zeus's mistress. Hera disguised herself as a nurse and befriended Samil. After finally gaining her trust, Hera convinced Samil to make her lover swear an oath to give her a single wish, which Zeus complied with. When Samil asked him to reveal his true identity, he pleaded and pleaded for her to reconsider. However, since he was under oath and she wasn't budging, he did. Unfortunately, the simple sight of him caused Samil, a mortal, to die. Zeus, saddened by Samil's death, acquired the help of Hermes, and with his help they rescued the unborn son from Samil's womb as she was dying. They then proceeded to stitch the premature baby into Zeus's thigh, where Zeus held him until he was ready to be born, and upon his birth he named him Dionysus. Though Hera was pissed now that Zeus conceived his own child, through his thigh no less, and so it was said that Dionysus was born twice, once in Samil and once in Zeus. Hera hated the boy, but all of the Olympus gods were fond of the young Dionysus because he was beautiful and joyful. When he entered adolescence, Dionysus started surrounding himself and enjoying the company of the Maenads. The name Maenad literally means the raging one. The Maenads were a group of women who were famous for their lustfulness, feasts that at times turned into orgies and their frivolous spirit. All these characteristics of the Maenads drew the young Dionysus and he started enjoying their company regularly until the point when the Maenads were the constant entourage of Dionysus. Soon Dionysus left Olympus with his entourage of Maenads and set on travelling and experiencing the world. One of the group's early journeys took them to a beautiful town with splendid gardens. The wife of the town's ruler was famous for her unsurpassed beauty. Dionysus heard of her beauty and wished that he seduce her. He saw her in one of the gardens and tried to persuade her to follow him in his journeys across the world. She accepted and escaped from her husband to join Dionysus and the Maenads. Thus, she became Dionysus' supreme wife. She had long red hair, voluptuous body, passionate temper and frivolous spirit. So she became the perfect match for the merry group of travellers. Thus, Dionysus, his beautiful wife and the Maenads travelled across the world, enjoying themselves at every stop, organising feasts and bringing chaos and frivolity. Somehow their behaviour mesmerised the ordinary people, and wherever they stopped, people discontinued their chores and engaged in the feasts. One of their stops happened to be a town that was ruled by the brother of the husband who Dionysus left with no wife. This was a perfect opportunity for Hera to satisfy her desire to punish Dionysus. She appeared in the dream of the deceived husband and pointed to the location of his wife and urged him to avenge Dionysus by killing her. And so it happened. The husband sneaked into the place where Dionysus and his entourage were feasting and speared the beautiful woman with a dagger. Dionysus was outraged. He immediately turned the husband into a rock and took the dying woman in his arms. He could not bring her back to life because he did not have such powers. However, he wanted to perpetuate her in some way. This is why he wished that she turned into a plant that is wild and passionate like her, and the juice of which brings happiness and frivolity like their love. And so, as the woman was dying, she turned into a vine tree. Soon grape branches were hanging from the tree. Dionysus picked them. Their colour was like the hair colour of his beloved. Their taste was like the taste of her lips. Dionysus squeezed the juice out of them and left it aside. He declared days of mourning. Weeks passed before the heartbroken Dionysus put an end to the days of mourning. He ordered his group that before they leave, they should drink the juice. The fermented juice penetrated their bodies and suddenly they felt divine intoxication, immense happiness, and they started feasting like when the beautiful woman was still with them. After they sobered, Dionysus took some branches with him and decided to travel the world, plant the vine tree and teach people how to make wine so that his beloved 
could be forever alive. Thus, to this day, when we are drinking wine, we are tasting the passionate love of Dionysus and his beloved. Thanks for watching. Yours truly, Mythos, the Historian.